However, I have not, uh, I did last week, but there were two things I, I missed, right? <clears throat> I spoke about a lot of things, but, and you need to do this before we jump into the, uh, the Shabbos. One, what are the Mishnah, the Mesechta objective? <laughs> you need to check this, remember. Without a checklist, you're not going anywhere. You're relying on intuition. You're going to guess, maybe, maybe not. With a checklist, you will be comprehensive in your thinking. Okay? Yes. <laughs> okay. So we need the Masechta checklist. We need the, which is the the view of the entire Masechta. There's certain there's items on that checklist of the whole Masechet. Then there's items in any given Mishnah. And then there's items in Halacha, which I had gone over. But I will rapidly repeat them. Okay? Three things that we want to learn. And then, by the way, there's a checklist of Tanakh, and there's a checklist of Gemara, right? Everything's got a checklist. Because the checklist is uh, what are the objectives that you want to look at in order to understand it. Claw, remember, the objective of all of this is clarity. <coughs> <coughs> You know what the goal ultimately of this? Which is really very interesting. You need to divert. You will know that you've made it. When you look at something and you say to yourself, I am not claw. Then you've made it. You will have developed the intuition when you do not really know what's going on or there's something missing. It's the greatest single a uh, skill you can develop. It's interesting. <laughs> because that will spur you on to really, you'll avoid one of the greatest pitfalls of learning, which is self-deception. There are many Jews, I should, I'm should. i talking about Jews, that are masters of self-deception. Just terrible. They fool themselves. And a lot of it is, well, for whatever reason, because they just don't know really how to get there. Uh, so you want to avoid self-deception. And therefore, in order to avoid self-deception, you need to know, feel, I don't really know what this is. You need to be honest. And then, if you can, you need to identify what you're not clear about. That's the next thing. You do that, then the likelihood that you will become really masters of clarity is very high. So one, to know that you're not clear. Two, to know what you're not clear about. Interesting idea. So, right now, <clears throat> we are not clear about clarity. So, the way to do that is we need a checklist. Because then, if we can answer the checklist, we're claw. If we can't answer it, we know what we're missing. Let's see. Okay, what's the Masechet checklist? One. Who? Thank you. <laughs> I like that. You said that a lot. I, I know, I know. Today. Identify it. Now, what, I, I, I'm, what I'm telling you, a lot of this stuff is simple, you know, but it, it, it's good, you know? I mean, I hate to say, you ask a guy, what are you learning? Uh, hmm, I don't remember what I'm learning, you know? He doesn't even know the title of what he's learning. You know, it's not very good, you know? But title, what's the Masechta or Masechta that you're learning? But that's it's one. Category. Sure. Identify. <laughs> <laughs> that's the Masechta know? checklist, one. <clears throat> Two. Right, number two. Seder. Who? Seder. You know, what Seder is in it? We know what, we wanna we wanna place it in where it usually belongs. It's low it's, it's called its location. So it's uh, it's uh, in the Seder. Which Seder is it? Is it Zroim right? Uh Zroim Moy Noshim Koch uh Gnizim Kochum Taras. Where is it? That's number two. Number three, uh, which Masechta is it of that Seder? Also helpful. The order. Order. Then the order number. <clears throat> Number four. Composition. How many Mishnah? How many composition, that's the title, correct. The title. Very good. How many Mishnahs are there? That gives you a nice feel about, you know, you know, it's interesting. They're, they're, when, if a guy picks up a book, you ever see, people have different styles. A guy who's organized, what does he do first? Imagine pick up a Safer. You know, Alavai, Safer should have this, but let's say, right? 
What does an organized guy do? What, is, what does he look first? Table of contents. He looks at table of contents. Huh. You ever know why? Because he needs to get a feel of all the different topics and he needs to feel the what's called the comprehensiveness of the area and how you break down each thing. The table of contents is one of the best ways to get into a book. Now some guys will just open the book and look at the book. You know, these guys are more into fragments, little pieces, you know. Some guys will look at the index, you know, whatever, you know. Some guys look at the last, <laughs> last page and they read the last page. You're such a thing. <laughs> okay, you know. <laughs> but, but, uh, but, but, so therefore, we need the title, the order, the order number, and the, oh, okay, that's three. That's the identification. Then you have the composition, which is how many Mishnais are there in this Masechda? It gives you a clue as to how extensive, how many halachas, right? That's number th- four. How many prokem are there? Because that's how they're going to be arranged. Four, and what? How many prokem there are in the Masechda? Yeah. Five. Five. That's number five. Number four is how many? How many Mishnais are there as a totality? You know, for instance, like Rosh Hashanah has uh, 35 Mishnais. You know? You know, Rosh Hashanah has four prokem. You know? And then the next thing, the sixth thing, is the distribution. How many Mishnais are there in each parent? So you get a feel of this, of the what's called the arrangement of all the halachas of that mesechta. Okay, so this is basically more you know statistical or mathematical. <laughs> okay, then we now come to what's more conceptual. What is the central idea of the mesechta? Now we're really dealing. You know, when you put away the central idea of a mesechta, masechet, whatever, that's ultimate synthesis because what you're trying to do is locate what what is that what, what, what when I what's a central idea a common denominator a common denominator which means what what does a common denominator mean unify what, what unifies them all right? it, well unifies them all but unifying what principle. yes the unifying principle good right but there's another way of looking at it. what is that idea which is in, in contained in every single Mishnah it's another way of looking at it you can use one idea which unifies, or that idea, right, is contained in every Mishnais. <laughs> it's what's key, with the all-encompassing, pervasive idea. Not easy to find. <coughs> For Shabbos, it's easy, probably. <coughs> yeah, it's easier. You know? Oh, well, and you'd be surprised. Some of them really surprise you. They really surprise you, you know? I, I, you know, like if I asked you, <coughs> you know, uh, what's the central idea of Gittin? What would you say? Get. No. <laughs> I, no, not at all. It sounds good. That's not what the central idea is. Am I wrong? The divorce process, procedure. <laughs> yes. It's there's, the, there's a lot the, of stars there also. Nothing to do with look, I will tell you something. There's always going to be other ideas. But what's the central idea of the Masechta? Because they're always going to be ideal because that central idea <coughs> can have a hundred different offshoots. Dissolving of but don't get fooled from the offshoots. You need to look at the common denominator, the Tzara Shavah Shabahan. And if you think about it, not that there's going to be, so, there's going to be certain ideas which are agav, you know, they, which are, they, they just get involved like the mirror says, you know. Term, terminate a legal relationship. <coughs> Who? Terminate a legal relationship. N- no. Well, yes, but not, not really. I wouldn't use that. The Gerishan process, isn't it? Gerishan isn't a procedure, it's a process. It involves many things and it involves sequences or phases, doesn't it? It's a process. So the Masechta is really the Gerishan process. I didn't say get, I didn't say get because get is what? It's a shtar. It's the paper. No, I know it's a shtar, but what is it? It's get is paper. one of the things involved in the process. So if you tell me get, no, that's not, um, don't get me wrong, of course it's, it's central, but remember, we want a central idea that is far more central than that, you see. <laughs> so Gerishim process is really what <clears throat> it's all about. If I ask you what Bava Kam is about, what would you answer me? Damages. Uh, Who? Damages. Maybe. More, you know, I know a little more detail here. What's Bovacama really all about? 
Liability for damages. No. It's funny. Boa Kama should be easy. Because it's, it's a Masechta that doesn't have aggregates. But you can only... It doesn't have 14 things going on in the same Masechta. It's really one theme. What's this, what's the central theme of Boa Kama? Violation of property. Of ownership. It's true, but that's not the central idea. What is the central idea? What is it? Ownership. Not liability or... No. It's all true. They're all ideas which are connected to the central idea, you see? You need to distinguish the central idea from the connections, Bibles. or the properties, or the features. But that's not the central idea. Bibles. Not easy. Baba Kama really should be much easier. Bibles. Who? Bibles. No. 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 It's too high. It's too <laughs> high on the list. You see, you gotta be zero exactly. <laughs> Anybody know? Volunteers? My opinion would be somewhere what something that was said before. Either well, liability or, or, or You're right in the sense that it's all part of it. You're right. But that's not a central idea. The central idea of Kamo is the perpetrators of damage. Otherwise known as the Mazik. <laughs> it's about the perps as they call them in police language. Yeah, all those things that could do damage. Yeah, now it assumes you know what damage is, which is true, which obviously is, 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 a, is an outgrowth of bilus. That's all true, you know, but those are what's called axioms to get to the central idea. You see, you always have to, dis you always have to separate. Well, it's all true, you know, there's bilus, right? And then the interference of bilus, which is hezek. But Baba Kama is really all about what? Perpetrators, all those guys that can do damage. You know what I'm saying? You guys agree with me? What do you think? Impossible to disagree. No, no, it's always uh, possible to disagree. Yeah, I'm there's sorry. There's more to it. It's. I want to tell you something. just the perpetrators. It's the different ways had 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 a damage also. Again, you see what you're doing? I'm sorry. I forgot your first name. Yisumer. Yisumer. Oh wow! What a name. <laughs> you, you hear what I'm saying? You're right, but you're right and wrong. Why? You're right in the sense that, of course, it's part of the Maserta, but you need to look into what is that idea that truly is the theme. And the answer is all the perpetrators of damage. Shane, Regal, Karen, Bo, Ish, Ganov, Gazlan. These are the Mazikim. That's really, every parak is about a mazik. <laughs> so that's the central idea. It's all about mazikim or perpetrators. Now, of course, you're right. You see, because all of these down now connect. There's a lot of stuff. Tashlum and that all connect. What did you say just before? The liability of the different types. Yeah, well, different types of what? Uh, damage. Of, of damage or a perpetrator. Exactly. You see, you always go back to the concept of perpetrators. That's all. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Great. Should I tie one more? Let's go. And we'll move on? I'm trying to show you a, a very important concept. A central idea is not easy to locate, yet when you hit it, ah, you smile. Because it's that which unites everything. You know, it's a certain hano, like getting the essence. Bava Metsia. What's a central idea? This is harder. Establishing ownership. Who? Establish no. 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 <coughs> Rights of ownership. No. Dispute, shared or disputed ownership. Who? Disputed ownership, shared ownership. Closer, but not exact. We all know it, we just can't say. What's that? We all know it, we just can't say. I know. <laughs> I know. 
ownership determination. What? Ownership determination. Impinged ownership. Determination of ownership. Getting closer. But that's second. Second. I'm like, only one. I mean, it's so, a so lack of clarity of ownership. So we establish. What's that? We call? clarify. Clarification. Clarifying device. I don't but what? Why do we need clarification? Because the, because because it's unclear. Because it's unclear. It's unknown. Mm. Bava Metzia is all about problems with bias, and there are two problems with bias. Basically, Suffolk bias. Who owns? And if Shoros of bias, can this be owned? In the second paragraph, all about all about Aveda. Suffolk bias. Who owns? Mm. Is it not? The first peric is about Suffolk bias because of Fact conflict. Dispute, yeah. Conflict. The second peric is about Suffolk bias because of unknown. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And Hamafkid, you go through all the prokum. And you see how they all come out like the spokes of a wheel. They all refer to problems of bias. Right? What's the third peric all about? It's about Shoman, Mafkid. What is a shoyma, really? What's a shoyma? Somebody took over. He's the bell. Yeah. What? Somebody took over Bailas temporarily. Good. Very good. good. Very good. Yeah, you can. We could call it a surrogate or a substitute Baal. Why? Why is he a substitute Baal? Because he was appointed to be. Who? So. He was appointed to be so. He accepted to be so. Yeah, yeah. He took upon himself to, be to do what? Act in place of the Baal. What Baal you usually do? In a to act in place of the Baal, right? What's the major thing that he does that acts in place of the Baal? Hmm. Who? Hmm. Safety. Hmm. No. No. What's a central feature of bias? You using it. Who? You're using it. No. Responsibility. No. What is it about a Baal that makes him a Baal? Think. Control, 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 Ooh. control, control, control. I can, t- I control the object. Of course, it's a my resource. Yeah, it's true. The ball said, "Okay, it's you watch it." What do you mean? I watch it. If I don't control it, I, I don't watch anything. If I can't control it, the essential concept of bias is the rights of control, the legal right to control an object. It means I can say what I want to do with it. I can use it. I can destroy it. I can do whatever I want. I control the object. That's what a Baal really is. It's a legal standing. It's the legal status where, where the law recognizes, or the Torah recognizes, that this object is in your control and not in that guy's control. That's what a Baal really is. So you there's understand? different levels of control? There's oh, so a Shoima is an interesting guy. He has limited <laughs> rights of control that was given to him by the Baal, in a certain sense, he replicates a Baal. And therefore, why do I have to be shown as something? Because, what's the idea that, the, the conceptual understanding of why I have to be shown at? it? Owner is, is responsible. Because what? The owner is responsible. Why am I responsible? You're controlling it. Control. Oh. Control. Calls. Control. You control something, you gotta watch it. Nobody else can watch it because they don't control it. It's control that demands what your Torah says. The the the, the tzivoy of Shmira emanates from control. You see, and if you violate the Shmira, that's the concept of what of hezek. Why? If you can control an object essentially, and the Torah says, "Well, you control it." You need to watch it, because you're the only one that can control it. If you need to watch it, right, then that becomes your responsibility. And if you violate that responsibility, then you're chayev. How is that a problem with ownership? Which? Shaman. Shaman. Yeah, how is it unified? You know, the, actually, the word problem, I shouldn't uh, use the word problem. You raise a very good point. I should really use what? <coughs> deviations from normal bias. No, deviations from, from ownership. I don't know who it is. It's one problem. It's a deviation from normal ownership. I don't know who owns it. Suffolk bias. Can I own it? Can I make a Kenyan on this? Well, I can't. I cannot own this. 
again, deviations unusual. of bias. Well, it, it's something like that, unusual circumstances. But I, let's use the word deviation, but I think deviation is a better word than problem. You know, because that's what, why you're raising, you know. I don't know who owns it. Deviation from normal ownership. Can I own it? Deviation from normal ownership. I have somebody else's object. It means I'm in actually in control. I'm a surrogate Baal, you know, right? So that's it. I'm a deviation from ownership because I'm not the Baal. I don't have the rights. He gave me the rights, and now I can control it. But that's a deviation also. It's like all the deviations of Bilas. The special, let's look at it this way, special case. So, Bofmitzi is all about what? <coughs> deviations from normal Bilas. <coughs> you see? And you just go through the Masechta. Azov. Or Ezuneshech. Take a bite out of that. What's it? Why is Ezuneshech in Bofmitzi? Who? Who does the ribis belong to? Can I own ribis? Can I own ribis? Am I said deviations of bias. Am I allowed to own ribis or not? You see? Uh, you, see you see You see? what I had? Bumatee is all about bias and its deviations. You see? I would say that's more of an agaf. Which? But really, think about it. I, it, I just, like, like I said, a deviation from bias has different spokes. One of them is, well, can I even create a legal state of bias on this? Can I own interest? In other words, can I even create the legal state of bias on the interest or not? That's a deviation. That's a problem. It's, it's a problem of bias, and you can't. In other words, so there's certain things that negates your ownership altogether. You see? There's certain things that I don't know who owns it. You know, and there's certain things that, well, I'm not a normal Baal, I'm a special Baal, or a substitute Baal. You, you hear the vault, you, you see what I'm doing? It's not easy to do that, I, I, I want to tell you something. It's not. You really have to think, but if you do it, you walk away, you, you don't want to look, understand, wow, I, I understand what the whole Bob, Bob comments are about. It's all about the perpetrators. Oh, once I know the theme, what can I do? Now let me begin to think about that. Let me categorize that. How do you categorize that? One, the perp, the fundamental characteristics of the perpetrator. You know what I'm saying? The uh, obligations of Shmira on this particular perpetrator. The instrument that the perpetrator uses. Who owns the perpetrators? In this case, moment, in this case, Gufo, and so on, right? What's the, the compensation if the perp, you know? If the person, and so on, there's all kinds of categories that you now create. That's the hafchonis you want to make. There's your checklist. Because you bother to look for the central theme of the mesechta. You see. It's not, like I say, some things are easy, but it's, it's a great thing if you can identify the common theme. So you're saying one is the perp, two is the characteristics, three is the two. Yeah, I'm just breaking it down. I mean, you can really get extensive on that, you know? You know, what's... The, who is the perpetrator? Shane, right? You know, uh, what's the essential feature of Shane? What is Shane, really? What's its essential feature? Hanole Zeko. You see, then you begin, you know, and so on and so forth. Then, what's, what's the compensatory uh, schedule? Tashume Nezek, Meita Vaoretz, you know, and so on. And, and you begin to look at the whole kind. So, what you do is you identify a structure of Mazik that all Mazik has to answer to. And then you've got all the categories, you see? And then the Gemara, well, you know, Mishnah deals with the fundamental facts of those categories, you see? And the Gemara will deal with the problems of those facts, you see? And then there's a causal link. Well, the perpetrator, what's a, what's a causal connection between the perpetrator and the damage done? You know, is he direct? Is he indirect? Is he a Gurim, a Groma, a Garmi? Is it Tzreiris, which is indirect? You see, that's the causal connection between the perpetrator and the damage done. What was the connection? You see, and how does that influence the Tashlumim? All kinds of things that go on. But the beauty of it is you make order and sense. you got a checklist. Anyway, everybody got that? That'll be Shabbos' work. Was that? That'll be Shabbos' work. Okay. Yeah, I'm just showing you that... <coughs> <coughs> That every Masechta has a theme that connects, unites everything. And if you identify the theme, you're a long way ahead 
of really organizing the structure. You see. Okay, great. Uh, so, pa, 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 pa. Oh, so the common idea, so number is seven is the theme of the central idea. Number eight. The area of central idea. Oh, the area, yeah. Let me ask you. Yeah, the area. So what's the area above a comma? We know what the central idea is. But what's its area? Balos, probably. Is who? Balos. No. Balos. No. no. Who? What? Who? No, 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 no. No, no. What? 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 Mazik. No, no, no. You're too specific. No. Who? Damage. Damage itself has a whole structure. What is it? How many kinds are there? You see? And part of Mazik is the perpetrator. But besides the perpetrator, what's on the other side? The Nizik. Right? So you have Mazik, the damage. The Nizik, right? And then you want to try to discuss the relationship. Then there's the legal consequences of this, which is the Tashlumim. You know what I'm saying? You create a Mazik, you create a Hezik model, of which Bava Kama is only one Havchana. Isn't that interesting? So the perpetrator is only one of the entire area called Hezik. You see what I just did? You see, that's why that's the area. <laughs> Have I got that? So when we're saying which area it is, we have to... What's the... Go above it. Go because, above it, do the zikin, and then you have to add... Because some... Areas, in other words, right? because it could be that Baba Kama itself is only a com one category of another central theme. You see, that's its area. That area is going to be the central theme of Baba Kama. You see what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So let's take Shabbos for an example. Okay, we're getting to Shabbos. So, then you want this the area, and then the, the, the ninth thing you want to know about a, a Masechta is what? Is the dimensions. How many dimensions are there of the central idea? This means Havchonus? It's Havchonus of the central idea, yeah. <laughs> Ah. Okay. Now, the mission checklist. Those are nine ideas <coughs> in the <coughs> Masech checklist. Now, the mission checklist. One. What's the central idea of the Mishnah? Because even a Mishnah has a central idea. Every Mishnah has one idea that unites all the statements of the Mishnah. Why is it not only important to understand the Mishnah, okay, and then because you see all the halachas in that Mishnah that emanate from that central idea, but for memory it's critical. When you memorize Mishnahis, you're going to memorize the central idea. That's the most important thing, because it's like spokes in a wheel. Once you've memorized the central idea of every Mishnah, the other ideas, the halachas, will just fall into place. Because that's the unifying idea, that's the glue that holds the whole Mishnah together. And for memory purposes, it's very important. So every Mishnah has a central idea. One. Two. Try to identify the area. Now remember one thing. You can make a learn Mishnah and say, I don't know what the central idea is. Each thing is something that has to be discovered, but it may not be right away. Sometimes the brain needs time till it sinks in, you see. Sometimes the brain needs more information. I don't have enough information to come to this, but at least I know it's on my checklist. See? So don't be dismayed if you're learning and you can't figure this out. But don't worry, you'll get more and more experienced. You really will. And after a while, you'll be a whiz. They'll throw any idea at you and shh. Within 10 seconds, you'll figure it out. It's just a matter of experience. You need to believe in yourself. It's experience. And it's a matter of knowing that this is the way to think. You do this after what everything. Let me ask a question. Sure. The, uh, <clears throat> I understand that when we, on the Masechta checklist, the last point was, what's the, what's the, the dimensions? Dimensions, yeah. So when you get to the dimensions, 
I already see right away in front of my eyes a structure. <clears throat> they may or may not be organized together. I'll give you an example. Take Rosh Hashanah. <clears throat> Anybody ever learned Rosh Hashanah here? You're nice? <clears throat> you know, because uh, yeah. Rosh Hashanah is a great classic. Well, even Yuvamas, you know, what's the central idea of Yuvamas? What is it? <coughs> Obviously, it's not Ibum, otherwise, you wouldn't ask the question. Oh, that's what? It's not Ibum, otherwise, you wouldn't ask the question. You're right. <laughs> it's not Ibum. But Ibum is part of it, you see? You need to separate the Ibum from the <coughs> central idea. What is the real central idea of Yuvamus? Really? Deviations of Ishas. No. You thought you had that. Oh, the that. copycats. <laughs> 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 yeah. But you're close. What? I want to encourage you. S you are close. Substitution. Except you used the wrong word. Substitution of Ishas? Ishas was really good. <laughs> Don't tell that to your wife. You cannot substitute a wife. It's not really a good um, no. short, short phrase. What is your vomus really all about? Really? What is it? Isn't Zika. Yeah. Zika. You see, if I ask you, what's, what's a notion, say the notion really all about? What are you going to tell me? You tell me it's about women? Yeah. It is, and it isn't. That's not the central theme it's of It's from a legal relationship. Well, Who? A legal relationship. Well, everything is a legal relationship. If I want food, that's also a legal relationship. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say that's part of Russian. You're too broad in that one. <laughs> legal relationship between man and wife. A what? Legal relationships between, uh, between men and wife. It's true. Between a woman. What? A woman. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Almost. Not yet. You see, you're being blinded by the specifics. Yeah. And you're being blinded by the fact that that happens to be the majority of the halach is discussed. But that's not the real central thing of, of notion. What is it? Got 30 seconds. You ever see these guys go into a park and there's chess tables? You ever, you ever go to have that in Brooklyn, you know? Chess table in concrete, you know, chess? You have two guys playing? But it could take forever, right? And there's a timer. Okay, you got one minute to make your move. Or you forfeit the move, you know? Or else it'll take it forever. You ever see these, you know? You got one minute, less. <clears throat> You're not going to get it. I can see the dismay on everybody's face. No. Noshim is about... You know. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, right. about? Say the Noshim is about ownership. But the majority of the laws in Noshim is about the ownership of a woman. That's really what, when the Torah recognizes by, uh, Ishus as Bilas. Be, Ishus is a special case of Bilas. It's when you own a woman as opposed to a cow. Please do not quote me. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> Oh, wow, am I going to get it from the women? <laughs> but uh, you understand what I'm saying? The Torah, ki ish nicknes. That language is used in Bailas. But Noshim is about the object that you own, I mean the living object that you own, which is called a woman. And Baal means owner, right? Yeah, Baal, yeah. Sure. That's right. What about Nazir? Oh, that's a good question. That's an Agav. Hold that aside. Hold that aside. But, and therefore the majority of the laws of Noshim is about women. But really it's about, what? Ishus. It's about um, ownership. Uh, ownership. Ishus being a special case, you see. If that's the case, you can now understand uh, that the central theme of what? Of Noshim is bilas, right? And it's a specialty or an emphasis on the Ishus, the bilas called Ishus. Now once you have that, now you take a look at the Masechtas, the Yavamas. What's Yavamas about? Well, Kiddushin. Kiddushin is what? 
how to create the state. And besides Kedushin, the second parak is ever every notice. It's all about how you create a state of bias. Right? Gittin is about how to dissolve, dissolve. bias. See? Soita is about what? Deviation. No. Can we say Gittin is about the divorce process? To the dissolve. I, I use the word dissolve. But is it about the Gittin process? process yeah. Or it's about yeah. dissolving ownership? No, it's, and it's a specific it, it example of one, but... It's, it's about the dissolution of ownership in general mm-hmm. with an emphasis on how to dissolve because it also has every every, you see, right? Get no sense about every. No, so therefore, that's why you see that such as women, how do you dissolve ownership? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, there are other ways of dissolving ownership besides, right? Well, how many ways? And that's in the huge area. So bias is the entire area of Nashim. Then there's special emphasis on what? On women, Isha, on every every, every Kanani, and so on, right? Uh, and so on. So there are ways of creating ownership. There are ways of dissolution of ownership, and so on. So get is the, the is the instrument that is used in the in the dissolving of of of, of, of women and so on. Yeah. Uh, once you realize that, so you begin to realize how every mesecta is really connected with what with a special case of bias called ishus. You see, soit is all about what infringement infringement, infringement on ownership. ownership. Very good. It's infringement, right, or interference with one of your properties. So, the, what's <laughs> the major... Not, why is that not in, in the Zikin, then? You, you know, it could be. It actually could be. Very good point. So, the, theoretically, could be in, in the Zikin. Because it's what? It's an infringement or an interference of somebody's bias called issues. But probably they put it in Nashim because it's about women, so it gets put into that sector, into that sedo. But what is Saita based on? What do you mean it's infringement? What does that assume? It assumes that your bias includes the property called marriage, marital intimacy. Right? You need the property first, and there's no infringement. You know what I'm saying? But this is not an infringement in a certain sense. It's an infringement on a property that I have which is intimacy, right? That's what soita is. A soita, in, I'm not soita. Well, it's a soita, a woman. She's engaged in an act, right, with another person, which is a perpetrator, right? And now she's the perpetrator also. In this case, she's actually, she joins, she's a conspiracy. Both of them join to destroy or to, to invalidate, could be, or to certainly violate the property. Yeah, she's a soita, also. Shem shasal balas you know, and so on, you know, but you see clearly that that bias or issues has a certain property. A property is my right. A violation of that property is called adultery, and so on. Okay, nedorim. Why is nedorim in soita? Uh, what am I talking about? Why is nedorim in moed? Nashim. Who? Nashim. Nashim. What I say, moed? No, it's a nashim. Yeah, I'm talking about. Why is what? The extent of his ownership. What does that mean? Control her vows. Oh, so really it's all about one parak. Why? Because the ability of a husband to annul his wife's vows is a property that emerges emerges from the bilis. Once you have the annulment of her vows, guess what? We might as well talk about vows. So where more? You got the whole nadar. Is that an agav? And once we talked about vows, well, what is a vow? A vow, what is a vow, really? A vow is what? Extent of his ownership. Yeah, but, no, that's not a vow. His wife makes a vow that he could annul. But what's a vow? Neder. What's a neder? Promise. Acceptance no. of a prohibition. Who? Acceptance of a... <clears throat> Who? What's a neder? Definition. It's who? Self-prohibition. Interesting. It's creating a iser. Creating a prohibition. Okay. Let me combine that. Limiting ownership. Limiting ownership. Limiting ownership. Or control, limiting use. Usage. Usage, right. 
Um, it may be. Yeah, could be. Okay. But what I would say, very simple. A vow is a verbal statement that creates a state of iso on some individual as regards a certain object. That's it. Now, if that's the case, a verbal statements that can create a state of isa, wow. So there comes another agav. What about verbal states that can create a state of what? Nazir. Of kedusha. What's a nazir? Nazir is a kedusha state. So bemo, you see, that's the agavs. That's why nazir and azirs. They are vows. They are verbal statements that create legal states. Isa or kedusha. We still never get your promises until I do. We're working our way toward it. Uh-huh. What's Ksubas all about, basically? It's all about what? Contracts. No. Oh, oh. the ownership of uh, Imatia there? No. What's Ksubas all about? The responsibilities that come along with it. <coughs> the responsibilities of ownership. Very good. Exactly. Subits is all about the responsibilities and rights. and rights and the obligations that an individual has toward his wife, which he owns. You see? Yeah. We need. Got it? And now we finally come to Yavomus. What is Yavomus all about? Deviations oh, oh, and no, dissolution no. of Ishus. No, that's get that's getting. The car- deviation. Sorry, good issues. Who carry carry on of the ownership after a person death. No. No, you see you're all blinded by the specific. I'm on Zika. That's you need I know. No, no you yeah. gotta rise up. You see, if you wanna map out the territory, get away from the trees Trans- like transference of ownership of Ishus. No. No. <laughs> 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 doesn't make difference what happens. What's the simple theme of Yuvamas? <coughs> what is and isn't connected. Well, yes, what do you say? Establishing ownership. I mean, that's the that's way to establish Inheritance. Inheritance of ownership. No. What is and is not connected to the thing that I own. No. I don't know why you all fixate on ownership here. Because we're it's not saying <laughs> we're not saying that's how we're trying. Okay. Thirty seconds. Look how hard it is to think. But <coughs> easy when you really think, not easy. And we're not even thinking about Rishonim and Achronim. We're not asking us what's the Rambam say or the the uh, for we're, we're not even into that. It's just simple facts. <clears throat> I'll tell you what it's about. Because Yibum or Yuvama is the clue. What does Yibum do? Really? What does Yibum do legally? Same thing as Kiddushim. Creates an ownership. Yibum? Yeah. No. What does Yibum do that's unique? He's in place of the husband. He's in place of the husband. Yes. But that's a a specific. That's after the central. What's the essential thing going on? What's the essential operation? Uniformus. And the answer is... It's a... It's essential... Yeah, yeah, it's okay, don't, don't have to run it, it's okay. Yeah, you can stay. You're okay, you can yeah. stay. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's okay. <laughs> What's your central idea of Yuvamas? The answer is, it's a deviation of Eshes Och, is it not? The Torah forbids certain Isurim. You know, it's, there are limitations on who you can marry. In a certain sense, it's like Ezun Eshech. You see? But Ezeneshek is what I can own. Yuvomus is about what I can own mitzad women. There are our erva. Yuvomus is all about, all about A, erva, and B, how to mata the erva. And what's an erva? An erva is there are object limitations of issues. There are object limitations of issues. There's a whole bunch of arroyas that you can't marry. Those are called 
which means I cannot own. Is it not? So there are object limitations as far as the object called women. Number one, that's its base. Number two, how do I deviate from that? And the answer is, well, Asia's Och, I can deviate through Yibam. Asia's is I can deviate from when? She's in Iguna. So how do I deviate? How, how, how do I matter an Asia's Ish? Kill him. No, no. You don't. You need it. That's it. Kill him. <laughs> that's original. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what David Amalek did, basically. He had Uriah killed. You, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you know what I'm saying? Look at it centrally. Your vomus is all about objects in which you cannot perform issues. Those are called erva. Now, the second concept is, well, how do I get around this? So, one of the ways of getting around is the whole concept called yibim. Eshesoch. Then there's also the halachas of Eshesish, that's an iguna. Well, how do I get around Eshesish? I can't marry an Eshesish. She's one of the arroyas. That's what your vomus is about. Your vomus is about object limitations of Ishus, which is a special kind of case of bias, and its remedies, its deviations. Got it? Now, is that not central? You see, but now you see how everything connects. Now, so your vomus is about the study of the deviation. When is the deviation? When is it not? To and whom is Truma it? Truma come in. I what? Truma, Truma, the sixth there. Well, Truma alone, Truma is what? what? What's Truma really all about? One of the... Truma is an object in a certain state of Kedusha. You know, forget about its origin. Its origin, yeah. you know, the origin of Truma. Right. But Truma is fundamentally an object that has a certain Kedusha state called Truma. Right. Yes? Fine, that's one, right? But then, what's the second thing? Who can eat Truma? Right? right? So, Yuvama says, okay, if you change the state's deviations, what does that have to do with Truma? The, or the object, can that person now eat Truma or not? You know, it's the property of being able to eat Truma emerges from a certain type of person. So, is it true now or not? You see. But that's only, a, that's only one t- spin-off. Mm-hmm. The real concept of Yuvama is the deviation of Eishas mm-hmm. Or the remedies of what? Of Erva. Erva is an object limitation of Ishas. That's what Yvamis is all about. How's that sound? Okay, so this is all area of... Anyway, that's it. Enough is enough. I'm trying to illustrate the beauty of a central idea. And then every Mishnah connects with it in a certain way. So every Mishnah has a central idea that connects with the overall central idea of the Masechta. You see, so ultimately what you're doing is creating... The central idea of a Masechta, yes? All the spokes, the categories, and each mission is nothing more than the laws of a certain category. That's how you, that's, that's how you organize the whole Masechta. When you do that, it's incredible how clear it is. You see? You get the central idea of the Masechta, and then each mission has a central idea, which becomes, which is really the halochus or the fill-in of a category of the whole structure of the Masechta. That's all it is. So the, the idea, well, in the Masechta checklist, the idea... <laughs> what was that? In the Masechta checklist, the idea... Masechta checklist, yeah. The same as the area. Yeah, in, exactly, yeah. In, so, in exactly. The Mishnah, in the Mishnah checklist. Exactly, exactly. So, in the Mishnah, what's the central idea? What's the area of that central idea, which becomes what? A category. A category of the larger central idea of the whole Masechta. What you're really doing is painting. We are painting a conceptual picture, except it's not a physical picture, it's an intellectual picture. We are creating a structure. This is clarity, where everything connects in its true relationship. And all of a sudden, the homosexuality becomes clear in your mind. And anybody who throws any halacha at you, what do you do? Immediately you know exactly where it fits. And you see all the connections. And then you can phrase all kinds of questions. And this person, it lies in his mind as a fragment. He can't do that. Because he doesn't see where it fits. You see. Got it? So you have central idea, area, 
then what you do is count the statements of the Mishnah. Because each Mishnah has statements. Five, six, seven. Every halach is a statement or a response. Count them. Because that gives greater clarity. And then identify them. What are the statements? Actually say, okay, this Mishnah has six statements. What are the identities? Or rather, what are they? And write them out, spell them out. So you now know the Mishnah clearly. What did I say? Better late than never, huh? Got it? So what do we have? Central idea, area of the Mishnah, right? Is number two. Number of statements, what are the statements, right? Same thing again, what are the statements? Each statement is going to, is going to fit into... Well, it's one of the halachs the, the Mishnah. The central idea. Yeah, Mishnah can have seven halachs. And it goes straight, straight to the structure. And they all ultimately come out of a central idea. Number three is how many? <laughs> What's that? Number three is how many? Yeah, how many? What are they? Number four is what are they? Right. Number four is what are they? Background. Number five is background. You can think with because every halacha needs a background. Remember, Rebbe did not put fundamental information. A lot of the information that Rebbe put, right, needs background information to understand this. You know where you really see this? You see this by Karate. By art scroll, or by Sefer Siyadeh Dishmaya, he's got to bring an introduction to each Mishnah. And many times he's got to bring an introduction to each halacha. Why? Because you need to know that halacha first. It's background. Then you can know the halacha of the Mishnah. So the concept of background, or what I call preliminary information of each halacha, or else you never really understand the halacha, you see. And the sixth idea is create a memory aid or what's called a mnemonic for the central idea. Because you are going to memorize the central ideas of every Mishnah. It's very easy, actually. Once you have the central idea, create two words, three words. You know what I'm saying? And you will get to the memory system, you will cause that, and you'll be able to go through the central ideas of the whole Seder in one hour. And that central idea will unite the whole thing. Okay, we now have the checklist for the Mishnah and for the Masechah. We need coffee. Halachas. I think we all, do we all know the Halachas checklist? Each Haloch has a checklist. Should I run through them? Although we've done this? Who? Start Shabbos. <clears throat> Start Shabbos? It's a good idea. We, 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 it's on the tape. Okay. Okay. Who's going to say the Mishnah? Tears of Shabbos. Shtayim Shein Arba. If name. Shtayim Shein Arba. No, 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 no. You, 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 no, no. Listen, listen. You need to translate this. Means you need to make believe we don't know a thing. You're going to say the Mishnah and teach us to Mishnahis. Okay? How's that sound? Okay, so we'll start with Yitzhak Zashadis. Yes. Shtayim Shem Abba Bifnim. Shtayim Shem Abba Bachas. The end of. <laughs> you just did it. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Carrying on Shabbos has, um, has two different. Um, <coughs> not going to be very um, precise words. Uh, <coughs> I don't care what to say. It in a wrong way. It's, it has two different ways of doing it. Two different forms. Two different forms, which, which, each one ha- um, has another one to it also. Each one, each form. Has don't use pronouns. Each form. Each form is what is divided into two. Okay. Each form of carrying. So carrying, right, or the activity of carrying, right, has two forms. Correct? Each of those forms itself has two further forms. Right? Great. Okay. So how many forms do we have all together? So now we have four? We have four forms. 
Okay. No. Now, if, what about the bifnim bachutz? Uh, that's um, bifnim. That's inside. Inside what? When you're inside a rishasiyach. Remember, we don't know a thing. You need to explain to us what you're talking about. So you should go into the background information. Very simple. Yeah. Background yeah. information goes the whole thing. Rishasiyach, rishasirab. No, no, no. Just, just say. You know. The Mishnah is giving us a situation, right? A situation. What is the situation the Mishnah is giving us? That there is somebody's house or his yard, and then somebody standing on the road. Inside the house is the owner. Outside the house is a normal poor man, right? And the owner has what? He's got a bed, he's got a piece of bread. And the, the poor man has a what? He's got a basket. That's the situation. That's the case. Now, that case the mission is going to use to illustrate carrying as two forms, which further generate into f- each one has two. You see? Now, how's that sound? So again, so the background information is the situation. You need to tell us the case. The case okay. is what? That there's two people. One is standing inside a house. One is, or inside a... His courtyard. Right. And the other person, and then guys, he's, about, he's the owner. Right. And then the other, the other individual is standing outside. In a public domain. Yeah, okay, a road, let's say. And, and, and he's a poor guy. Right. Okay. Well, what's going to be carried? Um, the piece of bread that's in... The owner's in, hand. In the owner's hand. And the what's in the poor man's hand? Well, soon it's going to be a piece of bread. Well, it could so be a bit. No, it's a basket. Right. Right. It's a basket. Right. Okay, that's the situation. It's sal. Right. Fine. So that's the background information. Yeah, because that's the situation. That's the case. Remember, every halacha. What's the definition of halacha? The required behavior in a given situation. That's what the case is. Right? So you need to know the situation. Then you need to know the halacha, which is the required behavior. Now we're not up to the required behavior. We need to know the case first. You see? Without the case, we don't know what you're talking about. Right. Got it? So you need to tell us, okay, now. So we've got the case. So now along comes the Mishnah and says, I'm going to tell you something interesting. Right? Okay, now. Tell me the different situations. So yeah, the Mishnah is <laughs> telling us that there will be... Scenario four. one. Situations inside, and there will be four outside. That well, that there will be four situations on the usher that's standing inside, and there's going to be four different situations of, of Isser standing um, with the Ani that's standing outside. Okay. And it goes on to explain. Ketza. Ani Amid Bachutz. Okay, that's the situation. Right. The mission is now enumerating the situation. Right. So here's one situation. If the Oni is outside and the Balabais is inside. Not if. That is the situation. Right. Sorry. Go ahead. Don't push it. Push it on as Yadai Lifnim. Vinasa Lutarisha Balabais. What's the Oni doing? If the Oni sticks out his hand into the inside. Yeah, the courtyard. The private par- property. Yes. And he puts. And the, Who's he? Uh, the Oni puts... No, yeah, okay. Puts something, puts a basket into the Balabais' hand. Yes. <coughs> Oi, so that's going to be one case, one scenario of Isser... Bachutz, I think? Ba, um, Bachutz, yeah. Right, it's Bechutz. I Or the Oni takes um, takes from uh, um, or the or the Oni takes the kikar from the Balabayas and takes it out. 
Then the Oni is Chayif, and the Baal Bayis is Pader. The Oni that goes and puts his basket in and gives it to the Baal Bayis, or he sticks his basket and takes, or he sticks his hand in it and takes the Kika from the Baal Bayis out into um, public property. <coughs> yeah. Then those are two forms of Iser, Bachutz. That there's two four no that's that's one bachutz and one fnim. Why not? No, I mean, it's, uh, no, it's the gosh that the Palestinians are doing. Uh, so I mean, bachutz just means dali. So those are two things of a bachutz in the in the eye. There's are two forms of iser that the person standing outside perpetrated. One of them being, to be specific, one of them being Hitza, one of them being Hitza. Which one is which? Well, the first case would be... Which? Um, would be... <coughs> would be Hitza. <coughs> yeah. And the okay. second one would be Hitza. Okay. So what have you said? What have you said, really? You've given us a scenario, or a case. Two scenarios. Yes. From the perspective of the Oni, from his perspective or his standpoint, let's say perspective, of a person standing outside in Rishus Rabin, and there's right, and then there's the guy inside. But the one who's going to be doing the actions is what the activity is the Oni. So from his perspective, he can do two things in terms of carrying. He can take a basket, right, from him and put it into the hand of the bar bias, yes? Right. So therefore the object, whatever it is, happens to be a basket, moves from the outside, which is a <coughs> to the inside, which is a yochid. Yes? That's one activity. That's called hitzo, uh, it means he brings it into which is a yochid, right? Or, yes? So that's one type of carrying. Second type of carrying is with a bar bias, right? will drop his bread into the get basket and the bunny will take the basket, right, out to himself, right? So therefore the basket with bread, actually, whatever it is, the bread, whatever, right, has moved from inside to outside, right? So that's called hoitzo. Okay, both of those activities are carrying, yes, and they are forbidden. Why did you, why did you say that the, the, the Baal drops his... Right into the basket. It could be okay. We just say. We just have a case where he takes it. Right. Yeah, he oh, takes it. That's the essential idea. Yeah. Took yeah. No, it's we, 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 we want the bowels to be passive. <coughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. Dropping it in is not. I mean. Dropping it is going to be the next case. Yeah. Right. So right. therefore, right. this is a case, right, of two of activity in two forms of the activity of carrying in two forms, <coughs> entry from object shasarabim to shaseyochet, right. That's called hachnasa. And carrying from Shusur Yochet to Shusur Rabin, that's called Itzor. When you say it's called Hachnasa, the Mishnah called it a Yitzia. No, from inside the... The Mishnah said it's a Yitzia. Yitzia is right. Yeah. So, well, could, because the Yitzia is a generic term for carrying. Right, so why would we not, why would you use the, the term, the generic term that the Mishnah uses? As a Yitzia, as a transfer, or as a... From okay. one Rishus to another. Right. Yeah, There's fine. A transfer. If that was the case, the Mishnah would say Nisiyos. Well, that would be... Yitzia is Hashem. That would be... Why does it, right? It's, the interesting thing about Yitzir is that Yitzir really means carrying. Even though it can imply two things, carrying or the direction of the carrying. But in this case, Yitzir Sashavas would mean the generic term, which is carrying. That's why I was asking why did you focus on a versus Yitzir. That's why I would say Yitzir. Well, the mission always calls carrying as Yitzir, even if it means Achnoso. That's what I was asking. Yeah. That's exactly or, what I was asking you. So, so why did you why did you make the distinction between Hachmasa and Yitzhiya? Because I recognize the generic term of transfer of carrying. Well, because I recognize that the Mishnah wants to illustrate direction carrying in two directions. Or else why bother, you know? So in other words, just give me one case. You know. So clearly this is a case from the perspective of the Oni, right? That there's carrying from Rabin to Yochid <coughs> and carrying from Yochid to Rabin. So that's two cases. So I need to identify 
with two different titles. I can't call it Yitzia. I'm not going to call it Nesia. So I call it Hachnos and Yitzia. There's no other way. That's what you know what I'm saying. I need to label it. Because the Mishnah clearly has identified two different forms of carrying from the standpoint of Bachotz. Okay? And then now we reverse it. From the standpoint of Balabai's Bifnim, what's the Mishnah going to do? Same thing. No, then the Mishnah goes down and says, Pashat Balabayis, oh, which means he takes a piece of bread and he puts it into the sal of the Ani, or... And that's not the other so then he went and he did it, so. Oh, yeah, good. That's one scenario. Yeah. Or he should not only take it, the Hechmes, or he took it, he took the, the basket. basket from the Ani, and he brought it into Rishas Yochid. Uh, good, yeah. Rabbi. And, okay. Balabai is high, then the inside is um, completely chayev. Yeah, so what's what's that case scenario? It's the same thing. It's a hitzor and achnosa, but from the standpoint of the guy inside. So theoretically, it's a, it's a it's a, a replication. You know, because the activities are the same, achnosa hitzor or hitzor and achnosa. So it's the exact same things. Except the Mishnah wants to analyze it from two different directions or from two different perspectives. You know what I'm saying? But fundamentally, what are the two forms? That's it. So, Yitzhiya Tashabas Shtayim, which is? Hatzor and Achnos. Hatzor and Achnos or Achnos and right? But the Mishnah wants to do something which looks repetitive, actually, and illustrate them from two different perspectives. You know? So yeah, clearly there is there was what there's called there's called a redundancy. What do you have to do that for? Just say there's Hachnos and it's all. You know, from however it worked, what's the difference? You know what I'm saying? Right. So well, but forget about that problem. All we see is two forms of the activity called Hitzo, which is Hachnos and Hitzo, or Hitzo and Hachnos. Great. <laughs> By the way, we also recognize something else here. <coughs> What type of carrying is it? Right? It's carrying, which is true. But what type of carrying is it? Not form. But what type of carrying is it? Derisa? Who? Derisa? No, that's the derivation or the authority. <clears throat> no, what type of carrying it is it? It's called Heshoto. I don't move. I just stretch my hand. I mean, my body doesn't move. I just stretch my hand. But it's interesting. There could be two other. There are other forms of carrying. Stretching is one. What other forms of carrying? Are they what? I could throw away what? Again, I don't. I don't move from my resource, <clears throat> but I, I impart a force the object, and that travels by itself or with my force. So, hashot is a form of carrying, or actually, it's a method. One method of carrying is called hashot. Another method of carrying is called zrika. And another method of call is called halacha, walking. Yeah, carrying, which means I myself leave the premise, or which is a yochid. So the Mishnah illustrates two activities, which both of them are called right hachnos from the perspective of two different places, in, but only one method called heishoto, and not the other two. So we've got three things going on, two different types of activities. Two forms, one method out of three. See, you've got three pieces of important information. Again, two. There are two forms of its of soul. It's one two method. Different, uh, one method out of three from two different perspectives. <clears throat> so, we begin to fill up. Great. Yes, we all have to go. Yeah. Folks? Monday night. See you then, Mister. No, no. We'll do the we'll learn the mission and then we'll seek to answer the Mishnah. You know, what I'd love to have is you know is have a blackboard begin to outline the. You know, but you 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 never had the uh, you missed that, the whole map. It's called the activity model, and the Malachi checklist. You don't have that. <coughs> Sorry? That's really the organizing structure of the Shabbos. Sunset drive. Great. Okay, so Monday night, 8.30, we'll resume.